What's up guys? I'm back with another group of affordable hardtails, all of them under $800. Let's check them out. All right, so this video is a follow-up to the eight hardtails under $800 video that I did a couple weeks ago. Uh, that video just got tons and tons of views. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a card up on the screen here. Uh, but lots of views, lots of comments, a lot of suggestions of bikes that I could have included or bikes that I should have included. You know, when there's only eight of them, you, you can't get them all. Uh, but there were a lot of good suggestions in there, so that's why I'm doing this second video here. So before we get into the bikes, I'll just go over really quickly that sort of wish list uh, that I went into more detail on in the previous video. Some of the things you should just kind of look for in a bike at this price point. Uh, so the first thing we'll look for is an air fork. It's a little bit hard to find. Some of them have it, most of them do not. Uh, you want to find a bike that has hydraulic disc brakes. I think every single one in this video and every single one in the previous video does. Uh, you do want to look for a drivetrain that has fewer gears, actually. It's counterintuitive. Uh, you'd like to have one gear up front and as many in the back as you possibly can. Frame geometry is a big thing. It's the one thing that you can't change. Um, for me and for a lot of people, that's more of a modern geometry that we're after. That means a slacker head tube angle. Some of the other geometry figures also factor in, but the head tube is kind of the first thing that I always look for. And then along with the frame, uh, some modern standards in that frame, things like a tapered head tube, things like boost spacing with through axles. Uh, again, that's kind of hard to find at this price point, but some of them have it. So those are some of the things you should be looking for in no particular order. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bikes. The first bike we're going to take a look at is one that I get comments about all the time when I do videos like these, and that's the Trek Marlin series of bikes. To fit in at this price point, that's the Marlin 7 at $7.99. We'll look at the fork first. That's a RockShox XC30. The 30 means that it has 30 millimeter stanchions, which is not too bad. Some really budget bikes will have 28 millimeter stanchions has 100 millimeters of travel and a quick release axle. So that's still a coil spring fork. It is the RockShox brand. Uh, it's really not too bad. In terms of the drivetrain, it's got a mix of Shimano Altus and Acera making up a two by nine system. Shimano continues onto the brakes where they have the MT200 hydraulic disc brakes. I don't see specs about the rotor size. My guess is they're 160 front and back. It does actually have routing for a dropper post, which is nice. And the paint job is just really cool looking on this bike. But there are two things that make this an instant no-go for me. First is going to be the head angle, 69.5 degrees. That's very XC oriented, very steep. It's not going to give you a lot of confidence on downhills. Uh, and then the other thing is the maximum tire size being only 2.2 inches wide. And that really is pretty narrow for tires. You know, a lot of them, especially like the, the better tires that you'll look at, they're going to start at at least 2.25 inches and then go up from there. So for me, this isn't a bike I would go for, but since so many people ask about it, I just wanted to include it in this video. Next up is the Cube Analog. This is a bike that's sold by Chain Reaction Cycles. It may also be sold by some other retailers as well. We'll start by looking at the fork. Again, we're going to see a RockShox XC30 here. Same 100 millimeters of travel, same quick release axle. Again, for a coil spring fork, it's really not too bad. One of the bright points on this bike is the drivetrain. It's a SRAM SX Eagle, so that's a 12 speed drivetrain. One gear in the front, 12 in the back. It SRAM's entry level into the 12 speed. So although it is the budget way to get into a 12-speed drivetrain, I would still prefer this for sure over any 2x9 systems. We'll take a look at the brakes. Another set of Shimano MT200s, 160 millimeters front and back for the rotors. So similar to the Trek Marlin 7, the one thing that I don't like about this bike is the frame geometry. Depending on the size frame that you get, you're looking at somewhere between a 69 and 70 degree head angle. Again, that's really XC style oriented geometry. That's great, I guess, if you're putting in a lot of miles on sort of smoother trails. But when things get chunky or when you're doing a lot of downhills, you know, you're really going to want something with a slacker head angle than that. All right, next up is a bike that I really should have included in that first video. I should have done some more research and found this one. Uh, this is the Rocky Mountain Soul 10. Comes in at only $699, and it's got a lot to offer at that price point. First, we'll look at the fork. It's an SR Suntour XCM, so that's a coil spring fork from SR Suntour. It has 120 millimeters of travel, so that's 20 more than most of the other bikes included in this video. Uh, it has a quick release axle in the front. For the drivetrain, we're looking at a Shimano Altus 1x8. So that's really kind of an interesting setup. You know, you see a lot of 1x9s, 1x10s, and 11 and 12. Uh, you don't often see 1x8, but the range on that is actually pretty good. It's 11 to 40 teeth in the rear. So, you know, you'll have a pretty decent climbing gear out of that. You would really, you know, ideally you'd want something more like a 46 in the back. But at this price point, that's a pretty appealing drivetrain. We'll look at the brakes. That's Shimano MT200s. We're seeing a lot of those. Hydraulic disc brakes. 
I can't find exact specs on the rotor size. We'll move on now to the geometry, and that's another one of the bright points on this bike. 66 degree head tube angle, so that's going to get that front wheel a little bit farther out in front of you. It's going to give you that more confident feeling on downhills. Um, I really like the geometry of this bike. A couple other cool things about it, it's dropper post ready. Some of the other bikes that I've, I've mentioned in this video may have been, and I, I maybe just didn't mention it. Uh, and then it also has a tapered head tube, so that's a good thing. It's going to open up a lot of upgrades. You know, that SR Suntour XCM, it's a coil spring fork. It's not the greatest. You would probably want to upgrade that. And knowing that you have a tapered head tube, that means you're going to have a lot of options for upgrades. The next bike is the Norco Storm 2. It comes in at $729. For the fork, we're going to see another SR Suntour XCM. This one has only 100 millimeters of travel. In terms of the drivetrain, it's a mix of Shimano Altus and Acera to make a 2x9 system. As for the brakes, they're Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. 160 millimeter rotors, looks like that's front and back for that. And we'll take a look at the geometry. 68.5 degree head tube angle. That's really not too bad. It's a little bit on the steeper side than what I would prefer, but it's definitely better than a bike that's somewhere around the 70 degree mark. And then of course, just in general, this is a really nice looking bike. I'm really partial to that kind of blue color that this comes in. So this bike, when you look purely at the components, may not be the best on paper, uh, but it's certainly not the worst either, and Norco is a really good bike brand. So you could definitely make the argument that this is a worthwhile bike at this price point. Next is the Scott Aspect 940, coming in at $699. For the fork, it's an SR Suntour XCR32, 100 millimeters with a quick release. The XCR is one step above the XCM that we're seeing on a lot of bikes in this price range. The drivetrain is a similar situation. That's a Dior and Altus 2x9, so that's a step up over the Altus and Acera that we're usually seeing. For the brakes, another set of Shimano MT200s, uh, 160mm rotors, front and back. In terms of geometry and the head tube angle, it's 68.5 degrees. One of the nice things about this bike is that it comes stock with 2.4 inch tires, so that's wider than most that we're seeing on here. That's really just going to give you a little bit more grip. All right, the Cannondale Trail 5 is next, and this comes in at $780. For the fork, it's an SR Suntour XCM. It has 100 millimeters of travel. It's got a quick release axle. Uh, one of the interesting things about this fork, though, is that it has a remote lockout. So you have a lever on the handlebars that you can flick, and that will lock out the fork. That's good for climbing, good if you're doing a mix of road riding and trail riding. And that way you won't be bouncing up and down so much. You'll be putting all that energy towards actually propelling yourself forward. For the drivetrain, we're back down to the Altus Acera combination from Shimano as a 2x9. Another set of Shimano MT200 brakes, 160mm rotors front and back. And then we'll look at the geometry. This is somewhere between 68 and 68.5 depending on the size frame that you get. This is a pretty decent package and it should be available to most people in the US because Cannondale is sold at REI and they're pretty ubiquitous in the United States. And now onto a bike that's not available in the United States. This is the Voodoo Bizango, and it's 675 pounds. That roughly converts to about $825 US. This is a bike that's available in the UK, uh, possibly some other places. It's sold, I know, at least in the UK at a bike shop called Halfords. From what I understand, this is kind of like a big chain bike shop there. I've heard a lot of mixed things about them. But in terms of the bike specifically, it's a really nice package. So we'll look at the fork first. It's an SR Suntour Radon Air Fork. It has 120 millimeters of travel, and it's got a 15 millimeter through axle. So this is one of the few bikes that we've looked at at this price point that has an air fork. I've personally owned a Radon, and I really thought that it was a good fork, especially for the price on those things. And then, of course, you've got the through axle, so that was one of the checklist items that I mentioned. Now we'll talk about the drivetrain. This is a SRAM NX 1x11. It's also another item that I have a lot of personal experience with. Um, I really enjoyed my NX. It seemed really snappy and precise. For brakes, it's got Shimano M315 hydraulic disc brakes, so that's a step up there from most of the ones we've seen. And for the geometry, it's a 67 degree head angle. That's kind of the sweet spot in my opinion. Another frame related item, it's got Boost 141 quick release in the back. So that's kind of that weird medium between the standard 135 quick release and then the Boost 148, which is kind of where it seems like most of the bike industry is going. It is dropper post ready, and it also comes with tubeless ready Maxxis Ardents. Interestingly enough, this is another item that I have personal experience with. I really like those a lot in most conditions besides anything that was kind of like really loose or really wet. Uh, otherwise, they were great tires. 
So if you're in the UK, this should probably be one of the top bikes that you're looking at, especially considering that you can just go to one of these Halfords bike shops and check this out in person. So there you have another group of quality hardtails at the $800 or below price point. Um, if you're watching this video right when it comes out, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic situation. Bike sales have just gone through the roof. You're probably going to have a hard time finding just about any of these in stock anywhere right now. Uh, but if you're watching this later on, hopefully that won't be a problem then. So hopefully you got something useful out of this video. You know, good luck with your bike purchase. Hopefully you can find something in stock and, you know, get yourself a bike, get out on the trails, enjoy nature. And you know the deal from here. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you for another video soon.